Okay, this is part two of the big fat myth about cholesterol. In part one, I described how it is that uh, LDL and HDL are both naturally healthy, but then they become inflamed as we eat too much sugar, flour, and trans fatty acids. So for a review, you can uh, go back and check out that that uh, uh, the part one video. This is showing how we make cholesterol. And this is showing, this is from, this was found in the uh, cholesterol chapter in the Deflame Diet book. And you can see up top, we have our primary calorie sources, uh, our primary macronutrients. We have, get my pen here. So we've got protein. Now obviously this would be carbohydrate. But when we live on sugar and flour, really what we're eating is essentially glucose. And then, of course, uh, we eat fat. So we eat fat, protein, and carbohydrate. When we eat uh, small amounts of sugar and flour, small amounts of carbohydrate, the outcome is that the pancreas is going to release normal amounts of both insulin and glucagon. And this is very important because when we create cholesterol, we are going to be influencing the enzyme that sits right here. This enzyme is called HMG-CoA reductase. And you'll see why this is very important, very important in a little while. But when we have uh, adequate protein and we have uh, mild amounts of, and well in this case, low amounts of carbon, this would be an actual low carbohydrate diet because we will be eating more dietary fat and the outcome will be ketone production. No one needs to do this to normalize their cholesterol metabolism, but this is just one example of what will happen. So when we eat low amounts of carbohydrate, a small amount of glucose enters the liver. A small amount of glucose will stimulate the pancreas. So the outcome is uh, normal amounts of insulin and glucagon. This will lead to, in the liver, we will have glucose that becomes acetyl-CoA that then becomes something called HMG-CoA. Now, HMG-CoA can go two ways. HMG-CoA can be converted down into cholesterol if we activate HMG-CoA reductase. If we have a low-carbohydrate dietary scenario with higher fat intake, which can be totally normal, the outcome will be an activation of an enzyme called HMG-CoA lyase. So HMG-CoA lyase as you see with this large arrow, shifts the production or the conversion of HMG-CoA into ketones. And so this is your ketogenic diet that has become a whole lot more popular in recent years. Now, the downstream effect will be that we still make cholesterol, obviously. We still make LDL and HDL cholesterol. It just becomes normalized. We are still going to make from HMG-CoA uh, coenzyme Q10 and heme A. So we are not going to be reducing these to a, a, an abnormally low level. It will be normalized. And in this case, with a high-fat, mild protein and low-carbohydrate diet, we'll be emphasizing body energy from ketones. And so this, again, is the, the, the becoming much more famous ketogenic diet in recent years. But one need not go into ketosis. One need not maintain a ketogenic diet to have normal blood glucose and to have normal triglycerides and to have normal uh, LDL and HDL cholesterol. Quite to the contrary, one need not do this. Now this, of course, you might, you might think, well, what does this mean? Well, I'll show you in a couple of seconds. So this is the d Flame Garden back in May of 2016. These are my parents, 80 years old, standing in the garden. Zooming a little closer. And the reason for the, the picture here is to show you this image in the top left that I have circled. Notice the top left that is circled in red. This picture, beginning of May, keep your eye on the top left there where it's circled. Look at that same tree. Look what happened. If my parents were in that picture at that moment, they would have been crushed by that tree that came tumbling down in a non-hurricane uh, state. It was just some freak tree falling event, maybe a windy day, some rainstorm. But notice down the bottom right that I just circled, also in a red circle. What you see there, this was May. This was the beginning of the sweet potato patch. So this one, this grew dramatically over time. And they're rather amazing. Didn't water them at all. 
uh, and, and then harvested uh, pounds and pounds of sweet potatoes later. This would be an example of the huge sweet potatoes that grew. I posted this one on Facebook. It was the size of a football practically. So uh, what is the point of this? The point is one can live on sweet potatoes, yams, and taro, and fruit as their primary calorie source be completely shredded like this Catavan man. This is a, a na native Catavan down in Papua New Guinea. You can notice the fantastic muscular development, absolute lack of adipose tissue. And their, their primary calorie sources are sweet potatoes, yams, taro root, and fruit. And no cardiovascular, cerebrovascular disease, which means they will have normal circulating fasting, postprandial glucose, lipids, and cholesterol. So the if one wants to have normal cholesterol and triglycerides and lipids, one need not be in ketosis. So don't fall for that in case you've heard of it. It's fine to be in ketosis, but you don't have to be. Now what people typically do is they go way far the other way. They overeat sugar and flour as we discussed in part one. So this is the average American's diet. They live on a high carbohydrate diet from sugar and flour. And when sugar and flour enter the circulation, the pancreas senses it and the pancreas releases large amounts of insulin. Now insulin stimulates HMG-CoA reductase. HMG-CoA reductase, as stated last time, is the enzyme that converts HMG-CoA down to cholesterol. Now notice in this image, there are no ketones, because when you are hyperglycemic, you produce virtually no ketones at all from a practical operational perspective. So glucose does two things. It, st it stimulates, well, it does lots of things, but in this image, the basics in terms of cholesterol synthesis, glucose from living on sugar and flour makes excessive amounts of insulin relative to normal, and that stimulates HMG-CoA reductase to produce cholesterol, and the outcome will be increased LDL, decreased HDL, and its subsequent oxidation, as described in part one of this two-part video series. The second thing that happens is glucose will enter the liver. And in the liver, glucose becomes acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is a precursor, kind of like one of, the, one of the dominoes in a domino block falling event. So acetyl-CoA becomes four things. We make energy, ATP. Acetyl-CoA becomes saturated fatty acids. So if you were to measure your circulating saturated fatty acid level, which is really not done in the clinical sense, but much more in the laboratory sense, what we will see is elevated levels of saturated fatty acids compared to those who actually eat a high-fat diet and low carbohydrates. The next thing that acetyl-CoA becomes is triglycerides. So if one has high triglycerides, it is not due to eating animal products. I mean, it could be if you overate, but very few people do it enough compared to sugar and flour. And then trans fatty acids lead to elevated triglycerides as well. So what do Americans live on? Sugar, flour, refined oils, and a large part, a substantial portion being, from compared to normal, trans fatty acids. So now we have in circulation from eating too much sugar and flour, elevated saturated fatty acids, elevated triglycerides, and elevated LDL cholesterol, and a reduction of HDL cholesterol. So what does this mean? This means that the average American is running around with, you know, their feared, all the fear about elevated LDL and total cholesterol, but what people are not told is that the driver of this is insulin production due to eating too much sugar and flour. And the outcome is prescription of statin medications. So statins inhibit HMG-CoA reductase that is turned on by insulin. I'll show that again. Statins. So statins inhibit this enzyme. And this enzyme converts HMG-CoA into cholesterol. So statins inhibit the enzyme that insulin stimulates. So this means that sugar and flour overconsumption is the reason why we have too much cholesterol in circulation. So it is sugar and flour consumption that leads to the substantial statin medication 
that exists in America. So if you want to learn more about this, you can check out the Deflame Diet book. Very inexpensive. 50 so or so pages on lipids in general, saturated fatty acids, cholesterol, and cholesterol metabolism. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook as well. And subscribe below to the Deflame Nutrition YouTube channel.